The death toll in Hawaii rises to at least 80 people after those devastating wildfires in Lahaina. And as the grim reality sets in for survivors, some are questioning the state's response beforehand and how much was done to try to warn residents to get out. Plus, Hunter Biden's legal troubles heat up. The Justice Department elevates the U.S. attorney investigating his case to special counsel after plea talks fall apart. And former President Donald Trump and his legal team get a stern warning from the judge in the January 6th case. We'll have the latest on the contentious hearing. New data shows that Americans are pulling out of their 401ks and relying on credit cards at an alarming rate. We're going to have a financial expert to weigh in with her advice. We begin with uh, really grim news from Hawaii, where those devastating wildfires have claimed at least 80 lives so far. Officials warning that the death toll will likely rise in the coming days. Crews have not yet searched the inside of most of the buildings, and it's still unclear how many people are unaccounted for. Yeah, newly released video shows just the horror of the fire as people tried to escape. This video that you're seeing here, this is from the Coast Guard. And it shows the view of the Lahaina fire on Wednesday. Coast Guard crews were able to rescue 17 people who escaped the fire by jumping into the ocean. And take a look at this TikTok video. It appears to show some of those desperate people in the water after they were forced to jump in to try to save themselves from the flames. Now, I should say that CNN has not been able to determine the source of the video or independently verify the video, but dense smoke and high winds created just what we know has been an incredibly chaotic and terrifying situation. And take a listen to this next video. It is hard to listen to, but it captures the terror as a resident tries to escape the flames in her car. We got to walk somewhere over there by the beach. Oh, MG, wrong turn, wrong turn. Going, oh, no, 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 not like this. Not like this. Going, not no, like no. this. No, God, the car. Oh, God. It is just terrifying to listen to those people scream and try to flee uh, in, in just a few seconds' notice, it looks like. CNN's Gloria Pasmino is in Honolulu with the very latest. Uh, Gloria, what do we know in terms of the rescue and recovery efforts? Yeah, it is just absolutely terrifying to listen to the voices in that video. You can just literally feel the panic that they're in, the fear that they're feeling as they're fleeing from the from the flames. Now, I, I want to talk about the rescue mission. The search mission we know is underway. We have learned that so far uh, officials in Maui, which is about 80 miles to the west of here from where we are, have been waiting for the arrival of FEMA teams that are equipped with cadaver dogs. Those teams are going to be searching the inside of structures. Those buildings have not yet been searched. So far, the amount of people that have been recovered, about 80 people who have lost their lives, have been found on the outside of structures. Now, I do want to talk about that public road that we know opened yesterday to give residents a chance to get back into Lahaina. We know that residents are anxious to get back in to assess the damage. Unfortunately, soon after the road was opened, they had to close it back up because there was so much traffic and people trying to get into the area that officials decided it was better to just keep them away for now. But that is creating a lot of frustration because there are people that are trying to get back in, uh, supporters and volunteers that are trying to bring supplies into the area. And that is really the biggest challenge right now. In addition, to the search and rescue mission that is underway. People are growing impatient. They are waiting for help and supplies to arrive. They desperately are in need. All right, Gloria Pasmino, thank you. I should say that we, you know, we spoke to an official in the last hour and I asked about that road. Was it open? Was it closed? And she wasn't able to say, but mm. uh, as, as Gloria pointed to, there are still a lot of questions about yeah. what the status is right now in Lahaina. Mm. All right, well, there is, as you'd imagine, growing concern over how authorities handled the early moments of the wildfires as the flames began to spread across the island. The Hawaii Attorney General is now ordering a review of the state's response, leading up to the fires as you know that there was lots of wind and some power outages because of that hurricane Dora churning in the Pacific and some critics are saying uh, you know perhaps lives could have been saved 
had there been uh, a, a siren warning sound outside. Earlier this morning, I spoke with Congresswoman Jill Takuda, and she says the state underestimated how bad the fire would get. Uh, it's not like hurricane force winds are unknown to Hawaii or dry brush or red flag conditions. We saw this before in Lane. We did not learn our lesson from Lane that brush fires could erupt as a result of churning hurricane winds below us to the south. And I, I, we underestimated the lethality, the quickness of fire. Uh, and in this situation, it, we have got to make sure that we do better. Now, Congresswoman Takuda also called for the waters around Lahaina to be dredged to make sure every missing person is accounted for. Obviously, she is referring to uh, the many people that jumped into the choppy waters there. All right, joining us now to talk more uh, about the rescue and recovery efforts is uh, Brian Stern, a former Army and Navy combat veteran. He is the CEO and co-founder of Project Dynamo, a veteran-led nonprofit organization that specializes in bringing help to disaster areas and conflict zones throughout the world. Brian and his team are on the ground in Hawaii helping with relief efforts and also, as, as I understand it, Brian, rescue efforts. Is that correct? Are you helping with rescues? Yeah, the, uh, the we're doing uh, we're doing we've done a lot of both. We've done a lot of humanitarian drops and a lot of rescue and a number of uh, airborne rescues. We're gonna do uh, start. We're gonna start some ground rescues today, most likely, assuming that the roads open up a little bit. Tell us a little bit more about the assets that you're deploying, the way you're trying to help, but also, I mean, how are you reaching out and communicating with the folks in Lahaina, who, of course, as we know, are having electrical and power issues? Yeah. I mean, how are you communicating with people there? Well, you, you, hit, you hit the nail on the head. The communication part is the problem. Uh, we need people to go to projectdynamo.org, which is our website, and register families and friends with their addresses and where they are. It is incredibly difficult to, to, go, to go walking around and hope to find somebody. We need people to register on the website. That way we can go be a little more targeted. That's also where people can go to donate. Uh, we are entirely donor funded and this, is, this costs money. Helicopters cost money, all this stuff costs money. So we need your help. Um, the, uh, as far as rescue operations go, it is slow going. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, we, we don't know, we don't know who's trapped and who's not. And it seems that nobody really does. And the only good way to do this is to have it is to targeted searches or blanket searches and go house to house, which requires a lot more people. Yeah, to tell us more about your approach, Brian. First of all, you, you're in Maui right now, right? And if, if so, where exactly are you on the island and how are you and your teams? Well, first of all, what are your impressions of, of, of what you're seeing and how is that impacting your approach in terms of rescuing or trying to rescue more people? Well, the, the, the affected area looks like a war zone, which uh, sadly Project Dynamo has a lot of experience with. We've, we've, we've worked in Ukraine, Afghanistan, Sudan, even Hurricane Ian. So this is, um, yeah, this is uh, fire and wind, not water and wind, but, um, but it, it, it's cataclysmic. It's, apoc it's apocalyptic. There's a lot of these homes and buildings were made out of just wood. So they went up like matchstick, like, like matchstick. So um, it, it is pretty, it is unbelievable to see uh, right now where I'm sitting, I'm about a nine minute, nine minute, 10 minute flight via one of our helicopters from, uh, from uh, the affected area where it's all burned. Brian, remarkable to hear you say, having the experience that you have, that it looks like a war zone. I mean, the photos are just um, heartbreaking to see. Help me understand, for folks who have been able to escape the flames, for those who have medical conditions, the, the direness of time in terms of getting people the help they need. Yeah, uh, that, that is the issue, is the, the, the you know, the, the access to the area is tough because the roads remain closed. Fires started again last night in at least one area, uh, two, technically two areas. The, the, um, the, uh, the brave firemen and cops and police officers that are here are completely overwhelmed. They need backup, they need resources, which have been slow going. Part of that is because we're on an island. Part of that is just because it's been slow. So with respect to people who have medical conditions, they're on a clock. Uh, they're on a clock, and we're seeing that on the island as well, where, where people are running out of food. Um, 
if you're running out of if we're running out of food, we're definitely running out of things like insulin and uh, and things like that. So, um, and there's no electricity, so anything that needs to be refrigerated is a, is a problem. So the bottom line is, is is we need time is ticking, and the weather is okay, but it's still very warm. And uh, uh, elderly people, sick people, what have you, they, we need to get to them and get them and get them out of the affected area to at least uh, a, a warm zone, if not something else. Brian, pardon me if you already addressed this, um, but did you say you were able to find some survivors? And, and is that is that the goal or priority right now? Uh, yeah, of course. Of course, the, the the number one priority is is the is the safety of life. We can, we, you know, you can rebuild a house. You can't real. You, you can't rebuild a son or a daughter or a mother or a father.